Oh, oh. I will start a little bit early. Just uh, one second, I will present myself. I am Daniel, and I came in peace from the Pizza Planet. I'm based in Italy, in Pisa, but I'm actually Brazilian, too. And I work at Red Hat in the real-time team. And uh, I'm also doing the PhD, and that's why I'm living in Pisa, at the Scuola Superiore Santana, and in an agreement with a university in Brazil, that is Federal University, uh, Federal university of Santa Catarina. And uh, I basically work with uh, real-time buff at work and uh, on my studies. So what is a real-time system? Real-time systems are systems that uh, react to um, events from the external world. And uh, it must to react within a, a deadline. So I have a request and I have a response. Sometimes it gets confused with high-performance computing, but it's not. Because on a high-performance computer, we don't have deadline. Why in real-time, we have the deadline. We can some, sometimes miss a deadline on soft real-time systems, but we cannot on hard real-time system. And uh, Linux is a soft real-time system, but we try to, to push as more hard real-time systems uh, algorithm as possible to help to improve it. So the, the real-time scheduling, it, uh, the, the modeling of a new scheduler done in the academic side, it's mostly done using a abstraction of a, a operate, of a system or a operating system. It's not done for a specific operating system, the, the vast majority of the, the theory. And so it's done inside a model, which is an abstraction of the system. And a system is composed, for example, for a set of tasks, and tasks run jobs inside it, or activations, have activations that run a job. And uh, the tasks are characterized by a, a set of parameters or variables that define the behavior of the task. For example, in the real time, it's common to have a period of activation or a minimal, a minimal space of time in which two activations will take place, like one at every 10 milliseconds or one at every second. And uh, the task will have uh, some time to run in this period, like uh, it will run 10 milliseconds every 100 milliseconds. And it has the deadline that makes it a real-time task. Um, so let's say the task needs to finish before the next activation or earlier. On Linux, to set a task to run in the deadline scheduler, we have uh, these three parameters. One is the period, that is the minimal inter-arrival time of each job, like the task will be awakened at every 100 milliseconds or more, for example. We have the runtime, which is the amount of CPU time the task needs to accomplish its job. And uh, the deadline, which can be equals to the period by default, or uh, shorter than the period, which is said to be a constrained deadline task. And we use this concept later. So why, why one would choose to run a EDF scheduler rather than other schedulers? Like on Linux, we have the fixed priority scheduler, which you set a priority for a process. And uh, you have a one, 100, no, no, 99 priorities, which is the POSIX real-time scheduler. And, um, and these, on the fixed priority, the task with the highest priority will always run when ready. And the second will run unless the highest priority is running, and so on. And uh, on the other hand, we have the deadline that in which it, we don't have a single task with the highest priority. But the task with the, the closest uh, deadline will receive the highest priority, even though there are, like this task, was the highest priority here, but here it's not anymore, because this deadline is closer. So why? Why would one use a deadline scheduler, which has those parameters that are not quite easy to define sometimes, rather than the fixed priority scheduler, which is just setting a priority? And that's because, it, because EDF is optimal. For a single processor, uh, optimal under optimal conditions. Uh, it means that under optimal conditions, for example, 
on a system with a, on a single processor system. And when jobs doesn't uh, suspend during the activation, when they have deadline equals to the period, I can fulfill a CPU until 100% of the CPU time running SCAD deadline tasks that I would not miss deadlines or in the ADF. Like, I can fulfill a CPU always. But that's not the case for the fixed priority scheduler. So the EDF scheduler dominates the fixed priority scheduler. And that's the, the main reason why one would care about the EDF, and that's why it's good. So just some, I would say, this word utilization is the reason of the how much time the task needs to run at every period. Like, I need to run 10 milliseconds every 100 milliseconds. And this is 10% of CPU, let's say. And I have the density, which is the runtime over the deadline, if the deadline is shorter than the period. Just for. So let's explore each of these points to find some open issues that we still need to resolve on SCAD deadline. So what if a task runs longer than it was supposed to run? Like if it tries to run 11 milliseconds rather than 10 milliseconds? Or what if the utilization of the system goes higher than the, I try to put more tasks than 100% of the CPU time? So what, what happens is that with a, a deadline-based scheduler, when one task misbehaves, it ends up uh, continuing running because even though this deadline is, is in the past, is still the, the smaller deadline. So it will run a little bit, will push the other task and end up pushing, and it can cause all the tasks to miss their deadlines. So this, this is known as the domino effect, and this problem is resolved on SCAD deadline. This is not a problem, but uh, this is how it was resolved. The, the, we don't allow the overcommitment of CPU time. We don't uh, allow the, using the admission, you can disable it, but under correct uh, assumptions, you cannot run more than 100% of time by the full 95%. Like uh, you can, it, uh, when you try to add a deadline task, it will pass by the simple admission test. And if your system has uh, more than 100, util 100 or 95% of utilization, it will start to deny accepting new tasks. And so we avoid part of the domino effect. And we use, also use the CBS to avoid a misbehaving task to run for longer than what it said it would run. So, that's it, we use the CBS, the constant bandwidth server. And uh, when a task tries to run longer than it was configured to, it is throttled. But, and, and this is one kind of open issues we have, it relies on non-suspending tasks. So, suspending task is a task, once it starts to run, it will run until the end without blocking or going to sleep or suspending being dequeued and then queued back in the run queue. So the ECBS it tries to guarantee that the, the utilization of the task, the current parameters, like uh, I'll show you an example, it's easier to understand, but that the absolute utilization is, is, is never higher than the relative, the parameters we set. So let's say I have one task with a runtime of three, and deadline of nine, and deadline equals to the period. Here we have the utilization that we set up. Then this task started to run, and it runs for one unit of time. And at this point, it calls like a nano slip, let's say, or blocking on a mutex. And so it still have two units of time to run, and we are eight units of time into the, the next activation. And then let's say that it wakes up again, very close to the deadline. We are still, we still have two units of time to use, of CPU time, but I'm just at three units from my deadline. And three over, and two over three is higher than three over nine. So the pressure that this task is pushing to the system is higher than the pressure that it uh, said it would push. So as the, the task is, is pushing too hard, it, we need to find a way to reduce this pressure. 
the classic uh, CBS, what it does, it resets the runtime and pushes the deadline to the next period, assuming that this was a, a new activation, like if the task arrived again. So, oops, no, don't see this slide. So in this case, the task was returned to the execution here. It received its three units of time, but its deadline, this new deadline was pushed here. And, uh, and But this is the original deadline. So the task didn't miss the deadline. Say, Arnaldo. Oh, no. But OK, so the task had uh, finished before the deadline, but only if it was alone, because if there was another task with these parameters, like 4 over 9, and it wake it up here, it would push the deadline over the deadline. And three, uh, 3 over 9 and 4 over 9, it's 7 over 9. It's, the system is not uh, over committed. So we end up pushing, missing this deadline here. Uh, so <coughs> what, how, how can we, what, what do we care more? Eh? Having runtime over period constantly to the task or trying to make the deadline? Um, there is one, another CBS, which is the revised CBS, and, and Yuri helped in, in the paper. It's one of the authors. Uh, it says that rather than pushing the deadline and giving more runtime, it truncates the runtime to a value that it doesn't push too much pressure to the system, higher than the utilization that it was configured. So in this case, when the task wakes up here, as it uh, is pushing too much pressure, we can compute the, the possible runtime that we still can have without causing damage to the system. And it's here, it's one over three. So the task is still have one, over, one unit of time to try to finish its ex execution. So. Yeah, but then, but then you need to think in, in the other, in the first, uh, in the original CBS, it would miss. Here you can consider that even the blocking time of the task will be consumed uh, as it, be, it was running, but not that pessimistic. It still can have one unit of time. So, so this what I was having seen was like the most pessimistic uh, view. No, this is less pessimistic than the other. Because the other, the task would just miss the deadline. And this is still have one unit of time to run. So, um, uh, let me return. So, should we consider using the revised CBS rather than the original CBS? What do we care more, trying to make the deadline or trying to make uh, to to make the task uh, like the, the CBS? Uh, trying to make bounded tardiness. So, okay, this is one kind of problems that we have. The other is the constrained deadline tasks, which are Okay, Linux accepts the deadline shorter than the parrot, but that's that that's not um, our admission test that uh, overload in the CPU is not true when we have a sh deadline tasks with a shorter deadline. For example, let's say that we have a two tasks with three over ten, and deadline of five. In this case, three over ten is six over ten. It, it's still using just sixty percent of CPU time, but as they have shorter deadline, we would miss the deadline. So that's easy. So r rather than using runtime over deadline, runtime uh, over period, we should use runtime over deadline in the acceptance task. But that's not true, because if we do so, we are being too pessimistic. In this case, we would have like this task. Both this task is has a shorter deadline. And it has a 100% of, uh, of density. But we still can run other tasks here without breaking the, 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 
the assumptions of uh, missing the deadline. So it, this is too pessimistic. But there is one case in which it uses this pessimism to avoid causing even more problems, which is, and we use the revised CBS rule. In that is the case of self-suspending and constrained deadline tasks. We, we have two uh, open issues here. So let's say that we have uh, this task with, uh, it runs two units of time in the, with deadline of four, but with a period of 10. It starts to run, it runs for one, and then it still have three times to the deadline. And then let's say that it uh, suspends itself and returns, like uh, here. Here we still have uh, one unit of time to run, and we are one far away from the deadline. And uh, in this case, using the, as we are running 100% of time, we would use the original CBS, and this will push the deadline to, to the front. I, I'm explaining the problem yet. So, so using the regular CBS, we would do this. But then the test could uh, suspend again, and then waking up and again, and uh, making this behavior. And in this case, we are using one over three units of time for this constraint deadline task. And so it's running more than four over 10. And this was a bug that we fixed by using the revised wake up rule to constrain a deadline tasks. So it's, we avoided the problem of using more CPU time than allowed by using the revised CBS because we cannot use the regular CBS in this case. And uh, currently the, the current CBS is like this, and is this, it's more complex than the original, but that's ways that we are trying to fix problems. So things are confused with a deadline shorter than the period and self-suspension of SCAD deadline. Yes, they are. And uh, they are even in the academic side. These are real open issues and it's subject of research, even in the academic side. There are some papers, but uh, that's the best we can do so far. So they are a real open issue. And uh, well, let's talk some about multiprocessor. We are just talking about single processor. So on multiprocessor, when you have more than one CPU, we can arrange the scheduler to be either global, in which one scheduler takes care of all CPUs, we can partition the scheduler when we have uh, one scheduler for the CPU, one scheduler for the CPU, or it can have clusters of CPUs. And uh, one restriction is that I cannot have a CPU being global and cluster at the same time. It can be just one. Or you cannot have uh, some a partition and global at the same time, just one. So the deadline scheduler, it's global by its nature, but we can transform it into partition using C groups or in cluster using C groups. But we cannot have a global scheduler and uh, a partition using with deadline tasks, just one at once. So the problem with a global scheduling is that it adds a lot, uh, a lot of anomalies in the, in the way that we write uh, the schedulability test. With global, we cannot say that SCAD deadline or if a ADF scheduler can schedule all CPUs 100% of time. That's not true anymore. And there are some anomalies that turn things obvious into no obvious. And the most classical example is this. Let's say that we have four CPUs and four tasks and all tasks using all CPU time. In this case, I'm, I'm fulfilling the, my system with deadline tasks and it's schedulable. Uh, when how, what about if I reduce the size of my tasks with the same period but reducing the execution time of them? In this case, we will have the the system is still schedulable. I say that we have a just one unit of time and the deadline a little bit shorter than ten units of time. So in this case, the system is still schedulable, right? That that's. That's uh, simple. But what if I added just one of those big tasks? In this case, 
as these tasks have a, a deadline, deadline just one minimum unity of time shorter than this one, they will be scheduled uh, at the beginning. And in this case, this, this task will end up being pushed here, and it will miss the deadline. So we have a, here we have a, a system fulfilled with uh, real-time deadline tasks, and it's schedulable. And here, here we have a system that is not fulfilled, but it's not schedulable. And this is the, the house effect. So, um, one of the mission tests for, one way to avoid the system missing the deadline with global scheduling in the presence of big tests would be using the, the, how, the this equation to admit new tasks. But the bigger is my, my bigger test, the lower is the utilization I can put in the system. So the system becomes a little bit pessimistic. And, uh, well, one possible solution with a SCAD deadline would be to create a partition, a, a one C group for this task and they put it isolated from the system, and another C group with uh, using these three CPUs and put all the other tasks here. This would work only if those tasks were not, for example, per CPU tasks, because I cannot move them. And uh, so it works mostly of the time, but not always, because we cannot accept like per CPU tasks on SCAD deadline. And, and that's a problem we face. Like we cannot have a K software queue as SCAD deadline because it's partition. Okay. So should we always use a partition system, like always partition the system to use a, and put ourselves the task there? So we can use that, uh, that idea that uh, on single CPU we can schedule 100% of time. Well, partition usually does better than global, but not always, because it's not optimal. For example, let's say that I have three, three tasks. Ooh. One task runs six units of time every nine, and the other task two, and I have one four over nine. There is no way in which I can schedule these, neither splitting the tasks or running it global. That's because neither, neither partition or global are optimal. I cannot always schedule things on them. And um, is there anything else we could do? Uh, okay, the current word in the academic side is same partition, but it can change over the time. But currently, that, that's the the big word in the in the academic side, which is using that example, we can pin some tasks on CPUs, like if it was partitioned. When we cannot pin a task anymore, it have it has its uh, deadline shorter, like we push one deadline, okay, how much units, I, units of time I have here? I still have three, so I gave three units of time and reduce the deadline of this task. And uh, I put the rest of the runtime with a deadline equals to the deadline here, but both tasks with the same period. And uh, wait, didn't I say that constraint deadline tasks are a problem? They are open issue. Yes, they are, but not always. And that's why using the, the density is too pessimistic. In this case, we have constrained deadline tasks. That example. So we have a, a constrained deadline task, but this does not, yeah. a deadline task, constrained deadline, 100% of density, but I still can use the rest of the CPU. So based on this fact that we can have one constrained deadline task per CPU, and this will not break this assumption, we can use this strategy of a turning one implicit deadline task and two constrained deadline tasks. And we are safe here. So how good is this idea of uh, using, okay, how good is the idea of uh, using the semi partition? There is one paper from Bjorn Brandenburg in which using some heuristics, he can reach 99% of CPU time. But you need to know all the tasks in advance. 
But that's not the case of Linux because it keeps accepting new tasks as the system runs. Whoops. I run out of time and run out of space. <laughs> so I have a 99%, but we need to know the tasks on beforehand. But that's not the case of Linux. For example, we can have tasks becoming deadline on the priority inheritance protocol. But there's one paper from people from Italy. Yeah, those guys from Italy are very smart. No, I'm kidding. And uh, they shown that on a online system, they can like this is global EDF, and this is the their with their heuristics. They can do as much as 44 percent better than uh, the EDF, and like uh, uh, more than 30 percent better than the partition using heuristics. So it's it's way better than we can we can do with only partition or global. And uh, we are implementing this, but it's still in a work in progress. And uh, yeah, no, one second. And uh, well, we have a, and we will we'll be able to use affinity on this case. And we still have argument for other talks, but I'm being throttled. <laughs> 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 We don't have time for questions, but you guys can find me. Here.